You know, earlier you uh, mentioned that uh, uh, maybe I was opposed to medical marijuana, and I said, no, I, I was just d dubious. And I certainly was dubious about the use of cannabis for treating ADD or ADHD, but that was because I didn't know anything. And when I looked into it, I found out that there were at least 40 papers uh, written before 2000 dealing with uh, the endocannabinoid system, cannabis, and ADD, ADHD, and that as early as 1998, efforts had been made in Oregon to add ADD, ADHD to the list of conditions for which uh, cannabis uh, was uh, appropriate or legal in the state of Oregon. I began to have people mention that they were able to focus and concentrate more with cannabis. I had people tell me that their grades went from D's and F's to A's and B's when they started using marijuana in junior high school. I had one patient come in and tell me that they attributed their graduating from the Maritime Academy to smoking marijuana. And another person who said that they were able to get their PhD as a result of smoking marijuana. And I started looking into this and found that there were hundreds of research studies that had been done which provided some of the information as to why this might work. And the reason that it probably works is that cannabis is important in terms of retrograde inhibition. And retrograde inhibition is a way of modulating the speed of neurotransmission. It's normal. And what happens if you don't have enough cannabinoids is that your neurotransmission is too rapid. So if you have a rapid uh, uh, assault, if you will, on the cerebral cortex of in a substantial number of ideas, uh, concepts, uh, sensory input, then it may be difficult for the cerebral cortex to focus or concentrate. But if you slow these down, these neural impulses down by a few nanoseconds, then you're going to give the cerebral cortex more of an opportunity to focus and concentrate because you're going to have neural impulses moving more slowly and you'll probably have fewer neural impulses. Now there was an article that appeared in Scientific America in December 2004 written by Elger Nickel and I had the good fortune to go to a conference and be able to chat with Elger about retrograde inhibition and about the way cannabis worked in terms of attention deficit disorder and he told me that I was you know more or less in the ballpark after all he's a, a researcher and I'm a clinician so there's not always a perfect exchange of information between researchers and clinicians but in this case I feel as though uh, I am close enough uh, to having a good understanding. Furthermore, in addition to Elger, there is a researcher at UC Irvine named Daniel Piamelli. Piamelli has invented six or seven substances that interfere with the body's own metabolism of its own cannabinoids. And he feels that by increasing the cannabinoids in the brain, that it's useful in treating panic attacks, attention deficit disorder, uh, Tourette syndrome, and bipolar disorder. And I think much of the way in which cannabis works can be explained by the phenomenon of retrograde inhibition. And what's happening there is, is that the cannabis is causing more dopamine to be available. It is the dopamine that actually causes, actually facilitates the retrograde inhibition. What cannabis does is it competes with dopamine for dopamine binding sites on dopamine transporter. And if you get enough cannabis, it fills up the binding sites on the dopamine transporter, or at least a lot of them. The dopamine can't get in. You now have more dopamine. You have more retrograde inhibition. You have slower speed of neurotransmission. And you have better ability to focus and concentrate. And I, I've had uh, been amazed. I, back in, I think, 2001, I was interviewed for an article in USA Today, their online version on migraine headaches. And the reporter was talking to me, and as often happens, they were discussing uh, their experiences when they were in college. And we were at this informal restaurant down near Zuma Beach, and after about 20 minutes of this, the waitress came over, and we'd been talking about migraines, and she said, my son, who's 20, when he was 17, he noticed that cannabis 
helped him focus and concentrate and do his homework and his grades went from D's and C's to A's and B's. And this was completely unsolicited. I also have uh, people call me up and uh, try to get me to see their teenagers. Uh, I have a rule, it's not ironclad, that I won't see patients under the age of 21. But in certain circumstances, I will see those patients. Uh, and in some of these instances, the, the parents have said that the change in their child in terms of their ability to focus, their ability to concentrate, uh, their interaction with the parents, their interaction with siblings, the turnaround has been fantastic and the benefits uh, have been such that they really are insisting that somebody uh, make a recommendation so that they'll be uh, legal and they want to avoid uh, these places where doctors are practicing minimalist medicine and not spending a lot of time uh, with the patients. Now, when I see somebody for attention deficit disorder, I often recommend to them the book Fidget to Focus, which is written by a local uh, psychologist, Dr. Roland Rotz. And Rotz himself has ADD. He has a website on ADD. He does some uh, courses through adult education, and of course he does one-on-one -on -one, uh, therapy. And he has been very good, according to some of my patients, in giving people with attention deficit disorder some very good strategies and techniques for how to successfully negotiate life with ADD. Because as you probably know, people who have ADD or ADHD are not very good at completing tasks, uh, tend to overcommit themselves, uh, often miss appointments, and so it's a question of being organized, of writing things down, uh, and of setting up a uh, certain structure to your life so that you can rein in the ADD. Now, ADD is not necessarily a bad thing. There was an article in Newsweek a couple of years ago quoting a bunch of experts saying that people with ADD made good CEOs, they made good entrepreneurs, and they were very creative. And I've certainly found that to be generally uh, the case amongst my population of patients who have ADD.